Hello everyone, welcome back to the education protocol. So as the third lecture, we are going to talk about antiarrhythmic drugs today. It will be a quick review. Okay, for the today's contents, first I am going to talk about basic features of cardiac cellular electrophysiology, then the mechanism of arrhythmia. Then I will move to classification of antiarrhythmic drugs. Alright, let's move on. Our first topic, cardiac electrophysiology. Here we are going to talk about the basic electrophysiology of cardiomyocytes and cardiac conduction system cells. Before going for the drugs, it's very important to get some basic knowledge about the physiology of cardia. Before starting anything else, I would like to talk with you about VGCC. What is this VGCC? VGCC means voltage gated calcium channels. There are several type of types of voltage gated calcium channels among cardiac cells. But for us there are mainly two types of VGCC that is important for today's lesson. So first L type we call long lasting type. You can find them in pacemaker cells, ventricular myocytes. Those L type calcium channels release a large amount of calcium ions when it is activated. Remember L type. You can find them in pacemaker cells and ventricular myocytes. Then T type. Why T? Because transient. Can find in pacemaker cells. Remember that L type you can find in ventricular myocytes also, but T type you cannot find in ventricular myocytes. T, tri T type, also called a transient type, is the main calcium channel that is necessary for the automatism of cardiac cells. You know, the pacemaker cells, they don't need any impulses coming outside to stimulate. They are automatic. They generate the impulse then they will flow down through the cardiac conduction system. There are several other types of voltage gated sodium uh, calcium channels just like P type, N type, R type but we don't need them or P type means Purkinje type you can find them in Purkinje fibers. N type is neural type and R type is residual type. Mainly remember L type. You can find them pacemaker cells, ventricular myocytes. They mainly affect for the large amount of calcium influx. And T type, transient type, you can find them in pacemaker cells. Oh, I forgot to tell you two meaning of two words at the beginning. First one is influx, I-N-F-L-U-X. Influx means come inside the cell. When a gated uh, channel is open, think about the VGCC. Uh, when VGCC is open, if the calcium ions come inside the cell, we call it influx. And the second word is efflux, E-F-L-U-X, efflux. We call that when something is going outside the cell. Okay, here comes to the topic, electrophysiology of cardiomyocytes. So we are going to discuss uh, in this slide about the action potential of single cardiac myocyte and its characteristics. 
so you can see the uh, how the action action potential occur and electric impulse varies in this diagram there are four uh, sorry there are five phases in this cycle phase 0 to phase 4 there are five phases in normal cardiac myocyte cells it will be different in pacemaker cells and uh, the cells in cardiac conduction system but in normal cardiac myocytes there are five phases okay so uh, phase 0 we will discuss the phases one by one so the phase 0 is rapid depolarization and the phase 1 you can see here an initial rapid repolarization phase and phase 2 is a plateau phase little bit flat so phase 3 is slow repolarization phase and phase 4 is when it comes to resting membrane potential so let's discuss how these phases are occur in phase 0 when the electric current comes through the conduction system from SA node to AV node his bundle Purkinje fibers and then finally to cardiomyocytes when the electric current comes the voltage gated sodium channels open at phase 0 then a rapid influx of sodium happen sodium ion come inside to the cell we call that sodium current so the membrane potential which was in at which was at uh, negative 90 millivolt will eventually become to, uh, about positive 20 millivolt okay so that is phase 0 what is phase 1 phase 1 is when at a point the sodium channels stop I mean inactivated then it becomes the initial repolarization phase or the phase 1 so what is the main event of the phase 1 the initial rapid repolarization phase the inactivation of sodium channels there are a lot of other things happening at phase 1 but we need to remember basically that sodium channels which were open at phase 0 are inactivated at phase 1 that is the main reason to cause the rapid repolarization process okay in phase 2 there is a little bit flat like appearance in the diagram what is the reason for that the reason for the plateau phase is calcium influx through slowly opening L type calcium channels we discuss about the calcium channel uh, calcium channel types there are several types L type T type P type R type but here L type calcium channels responsible for the plateau phase okay so what is the reason for the phase 3 is efflux of potassium by multiple types of potassium channels okay so you have an idea about the electrophysiology of cardiomyocytes let's move on to the electrophysiology of pacemaker tissues in next when it comes to the electrophysiology of pacemaker tissue the first thing you need to remember is that they are automatic there is a automatism 
in those cells. So you can see here the electric impulse, the pattern of electric impulse and axon potential in this diagram. We are going to discuss this one by one from the peak of this waveform. What is the peak when it's depolarized and start of repolarization? So at the peak, potassium influx occur causing the repolarization phase and uh, unlike in the normal cardiomyocyte these potassium gated channels voltage gated potassium channels will go up to hyperpolarization phase they will pass the normal resting membrane potential after that they will inactivate so there is a hyperpolarization phase in pacemaker tissue at the hyperpolarization phase there is a special kind of channel that open up and continue the process we call that H channel because it opens at hyperpolarization we call it H channel what is the uh, characteristic of this H channel the E flux sodium and potassium ions they uh, we found that there are several channels that influx or efflux as partic a particular type of ion right but in this H type channel sodium ions and potassium both are efflux so little bit funny right so we call that funny channel F channel or funny channel or H channel there are a lot of names so they cause efflux of potassium and sodium and the membrane slowly depolarize slowly depolarize when that comes to a point T type calcium channels open I told you that T type calcium channels are only found in pacemaker cells in heart so T type calcium channels open after the H type uh, the H channels completing the potential up to a step so that L type calcium channels can open and produce the impulse L type calcium uh, channels are the ones who produce the impulse the main waveform you can see here at the point this is the point where the L type calcium channels produce open up and produce the impulse so at this point also local calcium release is also happening from smooth endoplasmic critical smooth endoplasmic reticulum and sarcoplasmic reticulum but we need to remember that at hyperpolarization phase H type sorry H channels open up and then T type calcium channels open and complete the potential up to a level so that the L type calcium calcium channels can produce the impulse okay okay next we are going to discuss the mechanism of arrhythmia before going to discuss the mechanism of arrhythmias let's have a glance about the cardiac conduction systems so here you can see two diagrams I got it from Gannon's review of medical physiology uh, page number 522 you can refer that book here you can see the SA node 
and here is the AV node, atrial ventricular node, and then bundle of his, then the bundle buffer cat into two branches, right bundle branch and left bundle branch. Then finally it will end up in cardiomyocytes by Purkinje fibers. Here in the right diagram you can see the variation of the action potentials at different places in the conduction system. We already talk about the pacemaker cells and normal cardiomyocytes. You can refer to that. And they shown how the ECG forms by accumulating all these action potential impulses. So let's move to the mechanism of arrhythmias. Next. When it comes to the mechanism of arrhythmia formation, mainly there are two mechanisms that cause arrhythmia. So the first one, altered impulse formation. The second one, altered conduction of the impulse. What is altered impulse formation? There is a problem in formation of the impulse. Impulse like a patangan nakota, mukakari problem there is a problem in formation of the impulse and the, the other one is altered conduction of the impulse there is a problem in the conduction system conduction scheme so that the impulse is not conducted up to the cardiomyocytes very well so let's discuss them one by one The first one under the altered impulse formation is abnormal automaticity. It can be due to ischemia, scarring, electrolyte imbalance and certain medications and advancing age. When you grow older and older, over 70s and 80s, they cause abnormal automaticity and it causes some arrhythmia. And the second one under the altered impulse formation is by an ectopic pacemaker. What is the meaning of ectopic? Ectopic means something in an abnormal place or position. If something in an abnormal place or position we call it ectopic. There are ectopic pacemakers and ectopic pregnancies you might heard in genomes in abnormal place. Okay, what is ectopic pacemaker then? There is an excitable group of cells outside the normal SA node that causes premature heartbeat, produces premature heartbeat. You can see in this diagram, here it is SA node and here in the ventricles there is another ectopic foci that produce impulses and it causes altered impulse. So let's so let's go for the altered conduction of the impulse. Altered conduction of the impulse always occur because of some blockage, some kind of blockage. Let's discuss the first one. Conduction block. Conduction block happens when there is a permanent block in the conduction system it will it may be in between SA node and AV node maybe in the his bundle or in a bundle branch here in the diagram there is a conduction block in the left bundle branch and we call that left bundle branch block uh, the next one is re-entry. What is re-entry? 
re-entry happens when there is a transient blockage in the side of the conduction system when there is a transient blockage in one side of the conduction system the re-entry process happens let's discuss here in this diagram you can see uh, think that this middle part is AV node okay think that the re-entry the transient blockage happens at the place of AV node so Elect when it uh, from the SA node electric impulse come to the AV node then one side is one side there is a transient blockage transient means at, at a time it can be blocked and again it reveals so when it blocked the impulse will flow down from this this side and when it's not blocked after the impulse pass through this node then it will go around this place because there the, the blockage is transient at a point it may be block and then again it will not block it's transient so the impulse when it's blocked when it blocked the impulse will go around this way and when it comes to the point this point if the blockage disappear then it goes around then it goes around and around and making re-entry and causes arrhythmia all right finally we are going to discuss the topic 3 drug classification we are going to discuss the main part of this video the drug classification and in antiarrhythmic drug classification there are four classes class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 they separately they all have different characteristics let's discuss them one by one class 1 are the sodium channel blockers so in class 1 there are three sub categories class 1a class 1b class 1c let's discuss class 1a first so class 1a drugs they blocks fast sodium channels alright 1A drugs blocks fast sodium channels so that the action potential duration increase and also effective refractory period increase and also they block potassium channels not only sodium channels they also block potassium channels so that the repolarization process prolong remember the main characteristic in class 1a they block fast sodium channels so action potential duration increased and also they block potassium channels so that the repolarization phase prolonged so examples quinidine and procanamide when talking about quinidine we can give that drug to every form of arrhythmia and uh, in addition in addition to that sodium channel blocking and potassium channel blocking quinidine cause muscarinic receptor blockage so that the heart rate will increase and AV conduction will increase so I told you that uh, we can give quinidine to every form of arrhythmia other than that for uh, atrial 
fibrillation and atrial flutter and ventricular tachycardia we can give that the second example is procanamide it is the, the therapeutic use of procanamide is same as quinidine but it has less muscarinic receptor block blockage characteristics uh, there is a very special adverse effect of procanamide it can cause systemic lupus erythematosus up to 30 percent of cases that's all about class 1a drugs let's move to class 1b they blocks fast sodium channels just like class 1a drugs they block fast sodium channels there is no blockage blocking of potassium channels in class 1b so action potential duration will decrease the examples are lidocaine we can give lidocaine for ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation and also in uh, cardiac glycoside to toxification uh, the possible side effects adverse effects of lidocaine are CNS side effects effects just like seizure and also uh, lidocaine has high first pass elimination so we use it in uh, IV access as IV drug the other examples in class 1b are mexilatine and tokenine that's all about class 1b let's move to class 1c now in class 1c drugs they also block fast sodium channels same as class 1a class 1b class 1c are also fast sodium channel blockers in uh, especially in his bundle and Purkinje fibers but there is a special feature that they don't cause any effect on action potential duration wow so in class 1a they increase action potential duration in class 1b they decrease action potential duration and class 1c fortunately they they have no effect on action potential duration that's easy to remember the example in class 1c drugs is flecainine flecainine so we give that drug to ventricular premature beats the possible adverse effect of uh, Flecainides, they can cause sudden cardiac death, especially after post MI application. So, it is uh, very limited use. Now, it is very limited use. Okay, we finish class 1 drug sodium channel blockers. Actually, in this diagram, we only need to remember two classes class 1 sodium channel blockers and class 3 potassium channel blockers because class 2 is beta blockers and class 4 is CCB you already have learned them so it is very easy to remember that class 1 sodium channel blockers and class 3 potassium uh, channel blockers then other two are very easy let's move to class 2 Class 2 is beta adrenoreceptor antagonist, simply beta blockers. So they prevent beta receptor activation in cardiac cells. Uh, so then what happens? The SA node activity will decrease, right? In pacemaker, SA node activity 
decrease and also a v node activity also decrease because beta adrenal re receptor antagonist action they block beta receptor activation the examples are propanolol uh, acetabutol acetabutalol esmolol so propanolol is a non selective beta blocker you want to remember that propanolol is a non selective beta blocker act on whole body but acetabutalol and esmolol they are cardio selective beta blockers they only act on cardiac cell beta receptor blocking process okay we finished that class 2 also let's move on to class 3 the potassium channel blockers okay when talking about the potassium channel blockers they decrease potassium efflux so that it slows the phase 3 can you remember that repolarization phase so they slows down phase 3 then what happened action potential duration increase and effective ref refractory period increase so the examples are amiodarone we give that drug to any kind of arrhythmia and there is a very severe adverse effect those are the point you want to remember that and the other drugs are bretillium and sotalol we give that for ventricular fibrillation and both of them are emergency drugs for ventricular fibrillation you know that ventricular fibrillation is medical emergency that's all about class 3 okay finally we comes to the ccbs the easiest part in this classification because we learn it earlier in our very first video so calcium channel blockers that used in used for an anti arrhythmia uh, blocks especially the slow cardiac calcium channels they decrease phase zero and also they decrease phase four other than that they decrease the activity of SA node and AV node that is the function of CCBs in antiarrhythmia so the examples are verapamil we give verapamil can you remember what is the classification of verapamil in CCBs they are group 1 C phenyl alkalamines okay so there are few adverse effects of verap verapamil high potential AV blockage constipation and sinus array and we can give verapamil for supraventricular ventricular tra uh, tachycardia and atrial arrhythmias and also we use diltiasm what is the classification for diltiasm in ccbs class 1b right benzothiazepines okay we finish all the classification for antiarrhythmic drugs today we come to the end of the lecture i hope you have the confidence about antiarrhythmic drugs today you know the electrophysiology of cardiomyocytes and pacemaker cells you know something about the cardiac conduction system and you know how arrhythmia form and you know the classification of antiarrhythmic drugs so thank you very much for watching this video till the end and this diagram on classification of antiarrhythmic drugs is provided by Heshni. 
is very nice thank you very much Hishini hope you see you very soon in next video thank you very much